the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Uh, for you to, to take a look at, like I said, as we break this down, I, I want to go these these script these some key scriptures that uh, I believe is important for you uh, in your study and in your walk that you should try to do. I, I, I put down first of all, and now I'm talking about no effect. I said in uh, Mark seven thirteen, making the word of God a none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things you do. Galatians 5 4. Christ become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are falling from grace. Your, 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 your preaching, your gospel has no effect. And in that time, I said, I, I can't believe when I sit there, especially talking about the lynching that occurred and how people sit there and, and did some atrocity and said they did it in the name of Christ. Look at this right here. And I think you need to know and, and make sure you understand that those things those people did, they're going to go before God. All of us are going to go before God one day, right? Then this scripture said, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. What does happen? So you got to do the will of the Father, just like the Christ did in the God of the He He said, never let, let that will be done. That's what we have to do. He said in 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, in thy name, cast out devils, and in thy name, the men of work, wonderful works? But Christ is going to say in 23, and then I will profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So all those people that did those atrocities and un under the traditions of men, all those people that sit there and thought it was okay to to to, to hurt people and then and, and, and kill people and punish people and bruise people, uh, they 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 won't do it in the will of God. They won't follow the, tact, the, the teaching of Christ. We have to renew our minds. This is in Romans 12, 2 said, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're trying to sit there and try to impose our will on people to renew and conform to, to the image of God. And that's no, it doesn't work. You have to renew your mind by the word of God. And we as ministries and you as a church, as individuals, is to help people renew their minds, not force it on them. And you see right here in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, but if our gospel be hid, it be hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. This is what we talked about, and this is what I want you to get into the study. Like I said, we're going to break it down in part A, part B, through through D, or whatever it's going to call, you know, have it be completed. But use this. This is the foundation. Those are the foundation of scriptures, and I guarantee you, we have to move away from the doctrine of, of men, the traditions of men, and teach the gospel according to the word of God. A tree is known by its fruit. And people see your mean, nasty, ugly self because you want to be mean, nasty, and ugly. Opposed you want to be loving and kind. They need to see Jesus, not you. And that's why what this study is all about. I mean, we could change this world, but we can only change it if we do what the word and the will of God says for us to do. Get away from discrimination. Get away from hate. It's not doing His will. Amen. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the study because that's what we're trying to get into is what is His will? Teach His will. Amen. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed the study. Take care. <laughs> God bless you. All right. Hey, great. I hope you all had a great weekend. Hope you had a great week last week. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you have a great week coming up.
For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go into a, a study that has been really uh, on my heart. It, it, it's obviously we're standing in vain that we've been going as far as always teaching the Word of God with implicit understanding. But what, what I wanted to uh, really talk about is, the, uh, especially with the the things that the history of man, the history of, no, history of, of uh, from, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, given the New Testament to the uh, 70 AD where Rome destroyed Jerusalem and the, the expansion of the church. And, and we all remember the history of the church and how they put people in an arena, um, burn people to the cross. Uh, Rome tried to do as much as they can to destroy the church. And, and if you read the New Testament, uh, Paul and, and the, the disciples, the apostles, as they went forward, there was a lot of cases where the opposition came up, right? Because they were bringing in a new uh, concept. Uh, many of the nations were in pagan religions and so forth. And uh, even the, the Jews at that time felt that this sect, they call it, right? Something that branched, something branched off from uh, Judaism uh, called Christianity or called the way uh, was, was a threat. And in many cases, they tried to rob the people. That's what the New Testament at least with Paul and them, try to rile uh, up the, the, uh, the Gentiles as well as their own to go after uh, this new way of teaching, right? This this concept of saying, no, oh, it's not Venus, it's not Apollo, it's, it's, it's Christ. It is God sending his son for the salvation for the whole world. So it was a whole twist of what man was using as a key to salvation. And then even when the, the Jews, uh, the Jews also were jealous, the fact is that this, this thing was going to, um, excuse me, to the Gentiles, where they were very used to the custom to the children of God receiving the message, giving the message and so forth, right? So it was uh, it, was, it was different. And anytime there's something different, a lot of cases people will try to, you know, oppose it. I'm trying to get my collar right here too, so uh, that one is over there. What we got here? How my neck? And I like to see if they get a little balance, but you might do one. Okay, cut different, I guess. But anyway, let's keep going. So, so with that in mind, the 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 hatred and the the, the, the hurting of people, uh, besides the introduction of, of Christianity, is when Rome absorbed Christianity after they tried to kill it. I mean, they tried to put the they did the uh, arena with eating, getting people eating alive, burning people to the stakes. They tried everything they could, burning the books and the manuscripts and everything else. Those things expensive those days. And eventually they just made Christianity a state religion. Uh, and then they incorporated what they did then is mesh a lot of the pagan ways and stuff into it. Uh, but what, what I saw was the the from a, a gospel good news of peace and love, joy, you know, the fruits of the spirit approach. Uh, the Catholic Church, uh, led by the Catholic Church in a way, um, started putting on more militant type of Christianity. And, and we know this, these are factual things, you know, going out to the Crusades, uh, Spanish Inquisition, uh, the slave trade, the slavery itself. Uh, and then even after slavery, we talked about the lynchings and the systematic racism 
And, and, and it's, not, it's not to tell people, that, hey, this is what this is going to be about, or this is what this is coming from. What, 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 I, what I want to talk about, and this is important, for all those people that have been raised a certain way. I was sitting there noticing that the, uh, uh, I'll look it up, uh, the lynching from 1882 to, uh, 1968. This is an NWC report. It says that lynching was going on up to 1968. And it also reported that it's not just black. 72% of the lynching were of people of color, uh, of African American descent, or people of color. Some came from Europe. That's another history we'll cover later. But the, there's also whites were as well, based on the report. And, and I think most white people know that those things happen. Because anybody that was anti-lynching or uh, in support of the African Americans like um, that sometimes they were actually lynched and killed. I, I didn't know that. And, and, and I, that puts a whole new twist on the fact is that some people are what they are because of fear. Uh, because of the fact that people made them do it. Uh, and that, that really uh, is disturbing in the South that you may have a whole generation of people uh, that was forced to agree on a behavior that was contradiction to the teaching of the gospel, teaching of Christ. You know, the Roman Catholic Church going, like I said, the Crusades and the Spanish Inquisition and even the sale of witchcraft hunts and all those other things were, was contrary to the teaching of Christ. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, they made these things to, to endorse on the slave trade and all those things. They made those things uh, acceptable. And, make, and then I'm talking about <laughs> with the slave trade and, the, and slavery and, and Jim Crow laws and all other things made and then, like I said, find out that even whites were actually lynched and they were supportive of doing the right thing. <clears throat> so, what that, what that tells me, and then also there was other minorities, Chinese people, or China people, and, and uh, Native American, all those other people. Some of them also lynched as well. Out of that 72%, you know, you had other people that were lynched. And, and it, it created a culture that has really, if you think about it, has survived up to this day. And and uh, they use fear and everything else, those fear tactics, uh, where either you accept the fear tactics or they're gonna attack you. I mean, that's what you talk about when you're talking about liberals and the between conservatives and liberals or progressives and liberals or conservatives. And the fact is that <clears throat> one group is sitting there saying, let's move on. Let's move past this this, this thing of, of, of hurting people because of the color of their skin or because they're different. Uh, let's move on from that. And then you got the other people saying, we don't want to move on from that. We, we want to, to, to have things to benefit just us. We, we, we want to have a power base that, that, that doesn't, that includes us and excludes other people. We don't want to share that. We want to have that, that that situation where we are, we are, you know, when you talk about racism and say like that, just we're superior. And and forgetting the fact that those type of things, those traditions, really force some people anyway to that's I, I think a lot of this stuff now, when it, now look at the perspective, many um, European whites were forced to take on this brutality because some of them were lynched they were considered lovers of, of people of different colors you know um, but it was a contradiction of the teaching of Christ which is what I want to talk about why it's important to make sure that believers or confessors, excuse me, 
or people who call themselves Christian know that it is more important for you, A, not to operate in fear. Remember the scripture said, God is not given the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound like love. That we love one another, because Christ gave that new commandment, right? To love one another. That we do need to move forward. I don't care what you call it, progressive love, but I'm telling you, and talk to your pastors, your evangelical pastors and stuff like that, and sit there and say, I'm coming in the authority of the Word of God. Is, is the opposition, is the incorporation of evil, corrupt fruit, in line with the teaching of Christ? And if I line up with that and bear those fruits, Am I going to have eternal life? Am I in, am I in Christ? That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm more concerned about, and I'm talking about, and I know many of you, I hope, I hope, I really do hope, that many of you are concerned, not about you, not only about yourself, but for your children, to have eternal life. Rich young ruler ran to Christ and said, What must I do to have eternal life? Christ said, Mom, but not, you must be born again. And if you're going to be born again, then your fruit, you should start bearing good fruit. <clears throat> we always start bearing good fruit as certain. We come in huh? as corrupt fruit in a lot of cases, but the Bible said it. Christ died for ungodly. And therefore, we're going to have ungodly fruits, even coming in. And I don't care if I take that. You tell a religious person and sit there and say, no, you're supposed to be squared away. Tell them you're lying. You know, the Bible says, who say he's not sin as a liar? No, we come in as ungodly people. And we grow. We, we come in as babes, too. Maybe that's why some of the people who think they have arrived and forgetting the fact is that we come in as babes <clears throat> and we receive this as a sea of milk of the gospel and then as we grow we go into strong meat but if you got bare and corrupt fruit if you got hate and I'm talking about evangelicals I'm talking I don't want people to call themselves Christians and yet you got hate in your heart. Well, if you got racism in your heart and you preaching that, are you not babes or are you not even in Christ? And you tell them because you use the word of God as your authority, not me. Use the word of God as your authority of saying the Bible, the New Testament, Christ's teaching says to love one another. And you don't have the authority to tell that somebody is lesser than you because of the color of skin. My scripture told me under the authority of the Bible, it says in, in the beginning in Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man. He did not distinguish whether it was a European man, whether it was an African-American man, whether it was a Cuban man, whether it was a Jewish man. He did not. So bottom line is, you don't have the authority. And see, that's the other thing. You take your traditions, your traditions, and sit there and say, I have the authority to, to categorize people, social constructs, a man-made constructs, not God constructs. There is no authority on the man to have a social construct that tells them that I can treat anybody less than me without outside of love. That that's the that's the this is just where I'm coming from, and maybe we need to keep going for for as, as long as it takes. Is that you're not supposed to 
treat your fellow man as with evil and malice and racism and, 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 and any other thing. I don't care whether they got, they got, whether you're poor or you're rich, a rich person does not, de it, you, it, they, they can't devalue you, they can devalue your money, they can devalue your, 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 your assets, wealth or status, but they can't devalue you as a child of God. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are peculiar people. You've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. You are. You are a child of God if you receive Christ. You are all children of God. But we have chosen, those of us who have chosen, that Yeshua, that Jesus, is our personal Lord and Savior, that we believe in our heart that God is raised from the dead, that we have a promise of salvation. For the heart man leads into righteousness, and with a loud confession is made of salvation. That is the process. Nicodemus, Jesus told Nicodemus, no, well, not you must be born again. But if you're born again, then you should bear fruit of loving one another. When they went after Christ, remember that they did the fall fight of Christ. Then Christ said, if you, if I, if God was your father, then you'll love me. So if anybody sit there and start saying, I don't love you, and I'm talking about you, or well, if you sit there and say, well, I love all, my, all the people that are of my color. And not understanding that this color, this is this, this is just melanin in skin. Some of them have a lot of melanin, some of them don't have melanin in the skin. We're all human beings. Some of them are Asians. We're all human beings. Some of us are European background, but we are all human beings. You know that, you know that. Nothing I'm saying right now is, 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 is foreign or Greek to any of you. You know we're all the same. You don't want to say that, but that's fine. But the fact is, what you want does must line up with God's will. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Because I really think it's important because there's too many of us fault finding and setting each other. And I'm talking about the and when you talk about the the uh, the the for me the tragedy of how many people die under the false pretense of making enough money, human trafficking, fellow human beings. And even don't get it the countries that colonized and, 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 and exploited nations in Africa and other places in the world. These are things that does not line up with the teaching of Christ. That's what I'm trying to say. Same thing if you, if you take some of the other things, other uh, faith or religions. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm focused, I want to know my, I'm talking about Christianity. And the fact is that we're supposed to love one another. And you have withdrew your traditions. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's made the word of God a non effect in you, in your life. And, it, and, and you're teaching it to your children. Whether you're black or white, whether you're Jews or Gentiles. If you're teaching hate, if you're teaching discrimination, if you're teaching selfishness, you're not teaching Christ. And why we need to make sure that you and me, because you know, a lot of us got a lot of other things to work on, but this hate thing got to go. This, this division got to go. Systemic, systemic racism got to go. The murdering got to go. Hate. The Bible says who hate is a murderer. And no murder has eternal life with God's in you. Some of you hate people because of their, their sexual orientation, and 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 as if it was all, it's the justification is good enough that you willing to risk your soul. I don't even understand it. Because you sitting there sitting there saying, no, because they are an abomination. That's what you call it, right? That's what they say. This is a bomb. You call the person abomination when God was not even talking about the person. You were talking about the act. 
And yet you take the act and you put that on the person and now the person is an abomination. And now that gives you the justification to not show love, not show mercy. Because you feel that, well, God, because of the abomination that I can do bad things to people. And that's not the teaching of Christ. And we're going to go over the teaching of Christ. I guarantee you that is not the teaching of Christ. God does not need you to show your, to bear bad fruit. For you to bear bad fruit, meaning you show anger, you show ugliness, you show disgust toward a fellow human being. Because you you say because God hates God considered an abomination, but you you forget the fact is that God also considered hate an abomination. God also considered murder an abomination. You know, six to eight God hate. I mean, maybe you forgot about that. Maybe you forgot the fact is that he 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 rather you be cold or hot. But you want to be lukewarm because you want to you want to incorporate some of the evil to do what you consider good makes you lukewarm. And guess what? You mean talk about abomination? He said lukewarm. He spews out. He vomits out. That goes into meaning it's disgusting because it's lukewarm. And we got so many errors individually we got to work on. We got to work on our. We got to work on jealousy. We got to work on lust. We got to work on uh, uh, our own anger and unforgiveness and all those little things. We got to work on. We don't need to sit there and work on trying to deflect, show anger, ready to stone somebody because you found that they sin and you forget about the fact that you have as well. And the way to the sin, last I checked, for the Bible's death. So let's let's work on trying to build one another up, not divide one another, because division is a remnant in the eyes of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.